the most powerful tool that you have right now in your life, in your body, is your mind. That's why the enemy fights you in your mind. The devil doesn't have to tie you up for you to be bound. He just has to tie up your head. With stress, with worry, with aggravation, with low self-esteem, with pettiness, with anger, with hostility, with rebellion. And he can make you physically sick because your mind is sick. Lay your hands on your head and say, give me a new mind. Give me a new mind means give me a new perspective. Give me a new perspective. Give me a new way of looking at my situation. Give me a new way of looking at my circumstances. Get my mind ready for this year because when I get this year, there's going to be blessings. There's going to be miracles. There's going to be opportunities. Oh, yes, there's going to be some struggles. There's going to be some challenges. There's going to be some tests. But even the struggles are an opportunity for me to show off the victory if my mind can handle the change. If you could take it, you can make it. If you can take it, you can make it. All right, you train, you fight. Way harder than those other guys, and you win. You get out from under. You can take it. You can make it. You can do this. Just got to believe you can. There's some things I'm not taking with me in the new year. Everything that's inflexible and everything that's not ready and everything that's backwards and everything that's negative and everything that's condescending and everything that's carnal and everything that's holding me back, I refuse to take it over into another year and waste another new year with an old mind. Don't shake yourself around the comings and goings of this world. your opinions and your attitudes around circumstances that you cannot change. If you go into another year and waste another year with the old mentality while somebody's in the hospital begging God for the opportunity that you have right now, you better step into this moment. As soon as you decide to stop looking for answers in other people and miracles somewhere down the yellow brick road and click the heel to your mind, you could have been free years ago. If you can get your mind out, you can get your money out, you can get your family out, you can get your job out, you can get your career out. You can get your health out. You can get your prosperity out. If you can get your mind out, no devil in hell, no weapon formed against you, no enemy that hates you, no witch that hates at you can stop you from being free. If you can get your mind out, grab yourself by the head and say, we're coming out of here. Tell them I'm coming out head first. I will not face a giant without you. I will not make a major decision without prayer. I will not bring somebody into my life just because they please me. I'll submit myself, my destiny, my future over to you. You are my foundation. You are my rock. You are my fortress. You are my strength. You are my defense. Without you, I can do nothing. You are the substratum of every dream I have ever dreamed in my life and I will take no promotion you don't want me to have and I will accept no friend you don't want me to have. You're my rock! You owe him a level of commitment. You owe him a level of commitment. It's wrong for you to think that you're going to give an offering and God's going to bless a business you ain't committed to. Bless a marriage you ain't committed to. Bless you in school and you won't study. Bless you as a saint of God and you won't walk like a saint of God. 
Who do you think God is? Somebody playing in Vegas? God is not hitting a slot machine. God is a guaranteed, definite I am. The mighty God for sure bless you. He told Abraham, I swear I'm going to bless you. Ain't no chance, ain't no doubt, ain't no joke about it. If I told you I was going to bless you, I will open up the windows of heaven then wonder why I thought I'd be further than I am at the age of, let me tell you why you are not further it is not the devil it is not witches it is not demons and it's sure God ain't haters you are not any further than where you are right now because you have never thrown your whole self at anything in your life you take a half committed man and a half committed trifling woman and put them together and they'll have some half committed trifling kids and the whole house will be half committed because children will be what they see. Stop fussing at your kids. They're a reflection of you. Your second commitment is to family. And it's a very important commitment through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment you have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you or you're not gonna make it it's a commitment it's not a feeling you gotta come home when you are in love and you gotta come home when you're not in love or you're not gonna make it and stay there till the love comes back. It's a commitment. Y'all don't want to hear real truth. You want to hear fairy tale Hollywood shake and bake stuff, but in reality, it's a commitment. Commitment to your dream. You cannot get people to believe in your dream until you believe in it yourself. Stop asking people to invest in things where you have no investment. Stop asking people to deliver something to you where you're not willing to go to the wire for yourself. If you don't learn to give like you learn to get every area that there is not reciprocity, it will die. Reciprocity. What do you give back for what you get? If you're not committed, you're not going to make it. Even the ones with the personalities you don't like. You have to be committed through the storm and the rain and the heartache and the pain and the disappointment. You have to believe in the we and the us and not the me and the you or you're not gonna make it. It's a commitment, it's not a feeling. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. Until you follow through, until something is done, come hell or high water, tears and struggles and pain and you go through it anyway and you show up and you continue to fight on no matter the circumstances after a while something begins to wither inside of you anytime you need something that you can't give to yourself you're at the mercy of somebody else and when they don't come through you got pain and what you become is the consequences of what you didn't get it's an urge it's an urge truth be told every champion has felt it every president has felt it every king has felt it every lion has felt it, every winner has felt it, every soldier has felt it, every victorious person has felt it, the urge to quit. Don't you give up on your dream. 
I don't care if you don't have the money, and you don't have the help, and you don't have the family for it, and you don't have the background for it, and you don't have the friends for it, don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. It may take you twice as long. You may have to take courses and classes. You might not read as fast. You might not move as quick. You might not have as much, but don't you quit. Don't you quit. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. You do make a difference. As weak as you are, as tired as you are, as many mistakes as you made, you do make a difference. There is something they would lose if you were not there. There was something that they would miss if you were not there. You do make a difference. It is not the movement of the clock that produces the newness of life. It is the movement in your mind. You're going to hear all kinds of things said about you. Throw it behind you. The enemies that you see today, you will see them no more. No weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper. Every tongue that rises against you, God will condemn. This is my time. Truth of the matter is, everybody in here is going through a change. You don't have to be ashamed of yours. We are all in the process of transforming to a higher, better expression of myself. Let this be the year that I birth a higher, better expression of myself. Don't let the habits of my past Stop me from this metamorphosis. New year, new me. New year, new me. What separates us is transformation. The possibility of change. The desire to evolve the passion to get up off the ground and stop eating dirt. I'm, I'm tired of doing what I used to do. If I always do what I've always done, I'll always be where I've always been. I'm going to throw it behind me. There's somebody in this room that, that nobody would think would be in a church tonight, but you drew them to this place tonight because you want them to be a new me and a new year and have a new attitude and a new mind because the real battleground is in your mind. That's where the fight is. You lay down with it. You get up with it. You go to work with it. You can't digest your food because of it. Smiling in front of people and nobody knows that there's gunfire going off in your head. It's not a geographical location. It's not debt. It's not money. It's not haters. It's not enemies. It's not liars. It's not backbiters. That's not the battleground. Stop wasting your weapons on what people say because it is not what they say about you that matters. It is what you say about you that threatens your destiny. You will never be defeated by what they say about you. You will be defeated by what you say about you. I dedicate this to you, to the greatness in you, and to the dream that you showed up on the planet to produce. And it's simply this. If you want a thing bad enough to go out and fight for it, to work day and night for it, to give up your time, your peace, and your sleep for it, 
If all that you dream and scheme is about it, and life seems useless and worthless without it, and if you gladly sweat for it and fret for it and plan for it, and lose all your terror of the opposition for it, and if you simply go after that thing that you want with all of your capacity, strength and sagacity, faith, hope and confidence, and stern pertinacity, if neither cold poverty, famish or gulf, sickness or pain of body and brain can keep you away from the thing that you want, if dogged and grim you besiege and beset it with the help of God you'll get you it. have greatness in you what I'm trying to tell you beloved is that you can have a new year but it don't mean Jack Diddley if you don't have a new mind I'm telling you that you can buy a new car but if you put the old man in a new car, you still want to have the old experience. I'm telling you that a new house doesn't make a new marriage. I'm talking about a new outfit doesn't make you a new person. And if you think you are magically going to be a new person, I hate to be the bearer of bad news because new life comes from a new mind and a new way of looking at your life. I cannot step into the future and still think in my past. I cannot let the rumors and the stain of what they said about me destroy my opportunity. Slap somebody and tell them I gotta kill it tonight. I gotta destroy it tonight. I gotta get rid of it tonight. I gotta throw it behind me tonight. I can't drag that same old mess into another year. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what real beasts do. Everybody gets excited. E.T., the guru story, but nobody wants to get up at 3 o'clock. Everybody's excited when I say, I wake up at 3 o'clock, Eric's a beast, 3 o'clock. And then you try it twice at 5, and you <laughs> Like for real, you walk out of here pumped up, fired up, you get some new information, you're ready. Everybody wants to be a beast until it's time to do what beasts do. And what you have to understand is, everybody that you're going to hear from, Eric Thomas, my mother got pregnant with me at 17 years old, high school dropout, ate out of trash cans, lived in abandoned buildings, slept in cars, multi-million company that's changing the world. I didn't say America, the world, why? Because not only do I want to be a beast, if you follow my 24 hours, I do what beasts do. I don't want to motivate you. I don't want to just inspire you. I want to empower you. So we've been talking about what, 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 what do beasts do? I don't, I don't want to just look like a beast. I don't want to talk like a beast. I don't want to have beast paraphernalia. I want to be a beast. I want to be in beast mode. I want to do what beasts do. And so I, I, and so I told him yesterday was, the weirdest thing, I, I was reading the story about the lion and gazelle, just like you. I was reading a study, I was reading it and I was studying, I would, I would read it over again, I would study, I was examining, I would, I, I would pull back and, and I would digest the story. I'm going over the story over and over and over and over and I'm looking for, I'm looking for that thing. I'm, I'm looking, what, what makes a lion a lion? I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking because if I can find out what makes a lion a lion, I can help you turn that switch on. Because we all have it, that switch is in all of us. It's in a high school dropout. That switch is in someone who was homeless and ate out of trash. That switch exists in all of us. And I knew if I could just, if I could, if I could turn the switch on and if I could teach you how to turn that switch on. And so I'm reading the story and I'm asking myself, okay, Eric, what are the similarities? And the similarities are every single day in Africa. Woo, I love it. Every single day in Africa, I love it. It doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference if you're a lion or a gazelle. When the sun comes up, I love it. If you're a gazelle, you wake up with this notion that I must outrun. I must outrun the lion if I'm gonna survive. Listen to me, I don't know what, what your business is. I don't know what you're trying to do personally, but there's something you're gonna to have to outrun. Every single day when you wake up, something you're going to have to run. For some of you, it's alcohol. For some of you, it's other substances. For, for some of you, it's depression. For, for, for some of you, it's your past. For
For some of you, it's procrastination. For, I, for some of you, 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 your inability to stick with something, to, to, to start and finish. And for some of you, you can't execute. I don't know what it is, but every single day, like that gazelle, you're gonna wake up and boom, you're gonna have to run from something. That's something you're gonna have to get away from to survive. And that's all a gazelle is doing. He's running from the lion because he's trying to survive. And, but, but, but what's weird is though, that is that even though the lion is considered to be one of the most ferocious animals, one of the, one of the most dangerous animals, one of, one of the kings of the kingdom, that when the sun comes up in Africa, that, 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 that the lion has to do something too. Even though it's great, even though he's great, the gazelle's not gonna come and just let him eat him up. He's gonna have to chase that gazelle down. He's gonna have to kill that gazelle. So when I read it, that, that's the similarity. That if it doesn't make a difference if you're a gazelle, it doesn't make a difference if you're a lion. If you're at the top of the game, you still gotta work. If you're at the top of your game, you still have to grow. If you're at the top of your game, what I know about you, if you're at the top of your game, there's still room for improvement. You can still get bigger. You can still get better. You can still be bolder. If you are still alive, there's still room for growth. There's still room to grow and be better. And so it says, it doesn't make a difference in the safari. In Africa, it does not make a difference when the sun comes up, boom, you better get to running. And so I studied, I said, what's the difference? What's the difference? And I noticed, I noticed that the gazelle is running and I asked myself, what's the difference? And I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. The gazelle is running, the gazelle is afraid. The gazelle understands that if it does not stop running, or if it stopped running, it's gonna die. But I watched, I watched it long enough and I saw the gazelle stop and I said, ooh, I get it. It's not being chased. It's not being pushed. It's not being prodded. Some of us in this room, if we don't have a reward, you're not self-motivated, you're not self-regulated. You don't have that thing inside of you that pushes you. That alarm clock still has to get you up. Why? Because your passion is not waking you up. Your passion is not getting you up. And so I saw it, I said, ooh, the lion does not need to be pushed. The lion does not need anything external. That thing that it needs is inside. And so every single day, the lion wakes up and he runs and chases the gazelle. Why? Because he realizes that if he is to survive, if his kids are to survive, he must eat. And so you gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta do me a huge favor. You gotta get to the point where you don't need a car anymore. You don't need a house anymore. You don't need to be pushed by anybody anymore. Your dreams, your wives are gonna push you. Your spouse is going to push you. Your child is going to push you. The need to get better is going to push you. Because you're closer than you're ever going to be, it's going to push you. You don't need anything to push you. Your goals are going to push you. Your dreams are going to push you. The, 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 the opportunity of a lifetime that happens in this particular time frame is going to push you. It's going to drive you. It's going to make you better. So do me a favor as I leave. As I leave, you can't be average anymore, 70%, you can't do it. You can't do it and have what you want. You can't give me 70 and be what you want. You can't give me 70 and do what you want. You can't be average anymore. You can't be good anymore, 80%. You can't be good anymore, 80% and have what you want. You can't be good at something and have everything you dreamed of. To make your dreams become real, to no longer dream them but walk in them, you can't. 90%, you can be good, you can be good, you can be great, but you still won't get it all. I'm telling you, but when you become phenomenal, there's nothing you can't have, nothing you can't do, nothing you can't be, and I just, I believe that you're in this room right now. I believe that we're in the same space right now. I believe we're all in this place together. Listen to me, I believe that we're all in this place together because all of us, all of us hate average. None of us want to be good. And for those of us who reach greatness, we have a desire to push past greatness and see what phenomenal looks like. So I need everybody in the room, when you think about your goal and you think about your dream, I need you to understand, as I said to my wife in that hospital room, I can, I will, I must. I need everybody to say it with me. I can, I will, I must. Come on. I can, I will, I must. Again, I can, I will. I must. Now, now, for those of you, you want it all. Every single dream. Every single goal. As I say it, for those of you who really want it, you, you're going to say it, and you're going to say, stand, and you're going to say it like you mean it. I can. I will. I must. Come on. I can. I will. 
I must. Come on. I can. I will. I must. Now say it like you mean it. I can. I will. I must. Again. I can. I will. I must. Again. I can. I will. I must. Now I need you to think about that loved one, that, 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 that individual that you have to do this for. I need you to say it with me. I can. I will. I must. Come on, for that individual. I can. I will. I must. For that person. I can. I will. I must. For that thing you want to accomplish. I can. I will. I must. Again. I can. I will. I must. Now I want you to think about that hurdle. I want you to think about that thing that keeps pressing you down. I want you to think about that, that mountain that's hard to climb. I want you to think about that thing that you just can't seem to get over. We're going to get over it today. We're going to get over it. We're going to get over it together. I can. I will. I must. Uh, we're going to add to it. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. Ready? I can get over it. I will get over it. I must. Come on, come on. I can get over it. I will get over it. I must get over it. You just want to to step out of it, to step out of a, the, the, the whole race, the whole business. The, the monstrosity of being alive overwhelms you. If you have depression, if you have anxiety, if you have post-traumatic stress disorder, if you have any kind of mental health condition, this is not something to ignore. Depression, frustration, anxiety, pain, disillusion, it's just a natural part of the process of becoming a stronger version of yourself. The thing that keeps one living is a sense of future. That there will be a tomorrow, and tomorrow I've got to do this, and then the day after I've got to do that. Get started. And I'm going to tell you right now, it won't be easy. It will be hard, because life is hard. That's what life is. With depression, one of the most important things you could realize is that you're not alone. I've been places and someone has said, well, you lost an arm and a leg, so you have a right to be depressed. And I stopped you. I was like, depression is real. No matter what you're going through right now, doesn't mean that it's not going to end. I think too often we think about the stresses that we're dealt with right now, and we think that there's no light at the end of the tunnel. All that you can see is darkness, and everything that you try to do just kicks you right back in the face, and you just can't seem to get yourself up. You don't, you don't even have to go through something traumatic. Some are caused by you know, something traumatic. Some can be a, a chemical imbalance in the brain. There is light at the end of the tunnel. Life is hard. Life is challenging. There are ups and downs. And these challenges, these challenges that you face, they're going to do their best to take you down. Do not let them. Of course you have to work. Of course you have to show up. Your team needs you. Life needs you. Your family needs you. Life is for the living. Depression is not only normal, it's essential and be grateful for it because it allows you to reorder yourself at a higher level. I speak what's on my heart. And I gave my speech and as I was closing, I kind of mentioned some depression. Because I was, I was coming out of the winter months and I, it hit me again this past winter and I went and saw the doctor. And so it was on my mind and it came up. And as I was saying, I thought, this generation of people probably aren't connecting to what I'm saying. When I walked off the stage and they lined up, the amount of people that thanked me for talking about mental health. And here I was, I thought they didn't want to hear. I thought I was stepping out of line. No, it needs to be talked about because it's, it's not just this generation. It's people are realizing more and more that it's an issue. And the more we talk about it, the easier it is for people to be honest with themselves and get the help they need. Line up those problems and confront them, face them fight them. Do not let them bring you down. Do not personally identify with your depression. See it as you see winter, and winter always leads to spring and summer again. See it as you see nighttime. Nighttime becomes daytime again. Hold on to that fundamental quality of faith. And on the other side of your pain is something good. Suicide is a permanent solution to a temporary problem. 
no matter what you're going through right now doesn't mean that it's not going to end. Stand up. Dig in. Let those challenges raise you up. Let them elevate you. Let their demands and their trials make you stronger. Adversity you face today turn you into a better person tomorrow. You are worth more than diamonds. All the diamonds in the world, you are so precious. Every single one of your hearts, you can do something. Life is not always good. Life is always not rosy. But life is worth living. There's one thing, one thing, that if you did every single day, it would make an extraordinary difference in whatever mental health issue you're struggling with, and that is exercise. And the reason you've got to exercise every day is because what we know about human beings is that when you physically move, your physiology changes, and that changes your brain. Take the time to rest, because just what if that resting is the key to world-class producing. Get outside and exercise every single day as if your life depends upon it, because you know what? It does. Your brain needs it, your body needs it, your mental health needs it. And I feel like if you had heart problems and saw a cardiologist, well, everyone would be concerned about you, would know you're doing better and it would be open and honest with the crew. But the most complicated organ in your body, if you have a problem with this, suddenly there's a, we don't want to talk about that? No, and you can get over it. And that's what people need to realize. You can be cured, you can get past it. I assure you, the clouds will lift. Right there is sunlight above the clouds, you're just looking at the clouds right now. And they will lift and crisis has come to teach you the big lesson you're meant to learn to move to your next level in the next chapter of your greatest life. This depression will pass. It will go away and something much better will take its place. But for right now, all that you really need to know is that you have to make it through. Getting your heart rate up, getting outside, breathing, feeling connected, getting out of your house, which may make you feel depressed and trapped. The man I am with you right now as I speak with as much authenticity as I know how to share is the result of my times in the Valley of Darkness. Doing that every day, that physical push, you don't have to run. You don't have to go to an aerobics class. class. Get outside with your dog in the woods. Walk with a good friend for two or three miles. Doing that every single day not only moves your body, which changes your mind, it gets you out of your physical environment, which is one of the things that people with depression tend to have a hard time doing. And it also creates a bit of momentum and a bit of a routine in your life. Every time I experience a bout of depression, I come out on the other end a different person doing different things. But it's because I'm aware of what's happening and I'm looking, I'm aware. I want to see the opportunities as they present themselves to me instead of falling into the depths of a spiral down depression because I'm personally identified with what is happening when I'm upset. And your schedule is not full and you actually feel like you're wasting your life because you're not this epic producer. What if those times were actually a different form of productivity? What if those times were actually being productive in a different way? Where you're actually producing, not in the world, but producing within yourself. Producing strength, producing new insights, producing new ideas, producing new capabilities, producing new energies, producing new emotions, shifting from fear to love. Because when you go through difficult times, what do you really do if you feel your fear and your pain? You release it. It's out of your system. And you grow in love and bravery and strength. What does that do to your craft? What does that do to your power? What does that do to your bravery? What does that do to the light that you bring into the world? You become this incredible force that is undefeatable. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy. Work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself from the situation. Continue to move. Stay busy. Stay busy. Stay busy. You are part of a larger cosmos. 
whether you know it or not. And communing with nature allows you not to see the bars of the prison cell, but the stars of the universe. And if you can connect with those every day, my dear friend, you will use your pain as an instrument for your greatest growth. And then you try something new. And then you'll also go to school and people will put you down and parents will tell you that you're a failure because you failed at a test. And you start believing the lies around you saying that you're not good enough and no one's going to want you and you'll never ever do anything good in your life and you'll never ever you know, achieve, the, achieve the dreams and goals that you wish you had done or wish that you could do. And these steps take you closer. That voice saying, you're not good enough, you're not good enough, you're not good enough and all you need is one more step to fall. See, so you have a choice to know which step you're going to take today. What will sometimes haunt my dreams still is just like a general feeling of morose anxiety. Everyone experiences a version of anxiety or worry in their lives. I don't know why I opened up and talked about it, but I, I guess I was just sick and tired of just having it inside of me for 20 plus years and, and I was ready to make a change. What uh, helped me the most that I want to impress upon all of you is that I realize that part of my identity is saying no to things I don't want to do. And you are all in school and you all have a lot of teachers and a lot of people around you that tell you all day what you have to do, but it is your right to choose what you do and don't do. It is your right to choose what you believe in and what you don't believe in. It is your right to curate your life and your own perspective. We all go through things. We, we, we all go through struggles, right? There's probably everybody in this room that goes through struggles the same exact way. And I think that's what, that's what we all have to realize. It's, it's, it's just something that every single person goes through. And maybe we go through it in a different or more intense way for longer periods of time. But it's not there's nothing wrong with you. To be a sensitive person that cares a lot, that takes things in in a deep way is actually part of what makes you amazing. I also struggled a lot with anxiety and depression. If you start to feel like you are twisting things around you and you start to feel like there is no sunlight around you and you, you are paralyzed with fear, here's how you can help yourself. First, you have to understand what anxiety is, and you have to understand the connection between worry, which is something we all do, and self-doubt, which is something we all do, and anxiety. Anxiety is what happens when your habit of worrying spirals out of control. It's important for you to foundationally understand that anxiety and worry are the same thing. It's just that your body starts to get agitated and that's when we call worrying anxiety. Your heart races. You might sweat a little bit. You might feel tightening in your chest. You might feel a pit in your stomach. Uh, you have a surge of cortisol. You can actually beat it. This is how you're going to do it. So all day long, you're going to have moments where your thoughts drift. Like you'll just be hanging out with your friends and then suddenly you're like, I'm not sure that that person likes me anymore. <laughs> you know, I haven't heard from my kids lately. I wonder if they're dead or, you know, oh, you know, is what check. Like you just start worrying about stuff. Why? Because it's a habit. Because when you're not paying attention, your brain shifts from you being a decision maker and paying attention to you just kind of spinning things on autopilot. And one of your habits is worrying. The second you wake up and you notice, holy cow, I'm talking some negative garbage to myself right now. Mm. Five, four, three, two, one. You've just shifted the part of the brain.
you've shifted from the basal ganglia, which is where your habit loops are spinning, and you've awakened your prefrontal cortex. You've also interrupted that pattern. Now what you're going to do, because your mind is actually ready to receive a different thought because of the counting, now you can put in an anchor thought. Like if you have a mantra, if you've got a vision about the way that your business is going to turn out in five years, if you just have a thought that makes you really happy and proud, insert that. Now, why does this work? It works because of the counting. And I'm not kidding. We know, based on research, that positive thinking alone, not effective. In some instances, trying to force yourself to think positive can actually make the worries worse. Why? Well, the reason why is because it's really hard to just change the channel. What we have to do first is basically interrupt it and turn off the TV and then turn it back on with the prefrontal cortex awakened. So the counting is essential. And so you can start using this today. And the problem that I have with anxiety is the physiological side of it. Uh, I got shallow breathing, rapid heart rate, and most terrifyingly, the blood is actually leaving um, the prefrontal cortex. And so you're getting into a position where your higher level cognition is actually being shut down because it doesn't have blood flow. And then I began to visualize that what I was trying to do was get myself into a calm state where the blood could actually go back to the places that I needed it so that my higher level um, ability to reason would kick back in. The first thing that I started to do to be able to consciously control that was meditate. In meditating, what you're learning to do, at least for me, and I don't consider myself a meditation expert by any means, but this was one of the huge wins for me in meditating was learning to breathe from my diaphragm. Even one breath from my diaphragm had a really big impact. Breathing from your diaphragm instead of from your chest, right? So most people breathe like this and it's all in your upper chest. You're not getting a very deep breath. So in meditating and learning to breathe from your diaphragm and learning to consciously calm yourself down, meaning you're lowering your heart rate, you're breathing much more deeply from the diaphragm, getting the blood reallocated to the parts of the brain that are actually useful. Um, that meditating was my first step into that. When there are really hard times, there are so many tools that you can use to, to help yourself in those times. And it does get better and easier as life goes on and you start to get to know yourself more and, and what will trigger, uh, trigger certain instances of anxiety um, and where you feel comfortable and safe. So I would just say, don't ever feel like you're a weirdo for it because we're all weirdos. In 1973, a young man wrote a letter to American author E.B. White. The young man was losing his faith in humanity. And this is the reply he received from White. Hope is the thing that has left us in a bad time. I shall get up Sunday morning and wind the clock. E.B. White wrote those beautiful words in response to fears surrounding our future. As long as there is hope, get up and wind the clock. At times it doesn't matter the view, does it? You may be looking in the mirror at your own life. You may be looking out the window at what's happening around you. The future becomes bleak, days full of fear. It's when darkness forms, clouds roll in and life gets heavy. Sometimes we feel it together. Sometimes we feel it alone. Those times surrounded by sadness. And in those moments, 
what are we to do? For there is but one sensible response, isn't there? We wake up and we make tomorrow better than today. We get up, we rise, we wind the clock and we are to do it with our heads held high so that we can be the first ones to see the sun as it starts to poke through. You know, if you're down and you can see a reason why you should be down, then that brings with, uh, with it a certain clarity. But, but if, there's, if there's no reason, you tend to think, well, why, why on earth am I feeling like this? I don't understand. If you're like me, you're feeling it lately. We're in a moment when the clouds have covered some of the light. The way forward may seem to be slipping from view. The path of progress, which has been so hardly fought for, can feel like it's fading. Perhaps it was the path you were declaring for yourself, and now it's changing. It's shifting. Gone. And hope is the thing that has left us in a bad time. But hope is not the final fragile string. Hope is the start. Hope has a strength. It means something new is coming. Because it always does. Clouds break. The sun shines. In fact, it's never stopped. So in E.B. White's words, hang on to your hat. Hang on to your hope. And wind the clock, for tomorrow is another day. I want you to know that no matter where you are in life, no matter how low you have sunk, no matter how bleak your situation, this is not the end. This is not the end of your story. This is not the final chapter of your life. I know it may be hard right now, but if you just hang in there, Stick it out. Stay with me for a little while. You will find that this tough moment will pass. And if you are committed to using this pain, using it to build your character, finding a greater meaning for the pain, you will find that in time, you can turn your life around and help others going through the same struggles. The world right now is in the middle of a mental health crisis. It's estimated almost half the population suffers from depression at some stage throughout their life. Rather than join the queue, it's important we learn why we get down and then how we can change it. Because believe it or not, we create our own negative feelings and we can also ensure that we turn our lives around and be a positive change for others. The reason anyone gets depressed always comes down to the consistent thoughts we think and the consistent beliefs we hold. Let me say that again. The reason anyone gets depressed always comes down to the consistent thoughts we think and the consistent beliefs we hold. The point here is that anyone that is depressed is so because there is an external factor that didn't materialize in their life. They have lost something outside of their control or don't have something that is out of their control. In school, we are taught how to get a job, but no one teaches us how to live in a state of happiness. No one teaches us how important our conscious and unconscious thoughts and associations are. Is our happiness not worth more than a job? Yes, it is. And before you say happiness won't pay my bills, happiness will pay your bills. When you realize you will be 10 times more energized, focused, and take positive action in your life, when you first choose to develop yourself as a priority and then get to the stuff of the world. I've seen some people who many would consider to have it all in their life because they thought they were not good enough. A thought, a belief within them told them they were not worthy. These people that many were jealous of, many envious of, were not good enough. You must value yourself enough to take the time every single day to work on you, 
to engage in something that will ensure you are a positive influence on the world. This, of course, doesn't mean life will suddenly be perfect. The same life challenges will show up. But if your mind is strong, if your mind is at peace, your reaction to the challenging times will be very different. Your reaction will be, how can I make this work? Not why is this happening to me? And then others will look to you, not with pity, but with hope. Because your strength will become their hope, their strength. You really can be that powerful. You can ditch the victim story. You can leave the pain behind and focus on how you will react next. How you will react positively. Read. Read all you can read to get your mind in a positive place. Take steps to ensure you will be in a better position next time. Whatever pain you are suffering from, how you can ensure it won't show again. Take little steps and soon you will be at the top of the staircase. Don't give up. You are worthy. You are more than worthy. You deserve to experience how great life can be and you owe it to the world to be that positive change for others, to inspire others who will look to you and say, he did it, she did it, and I can do it too. It's never going to make sense. It's never going to be obvious. You're never going to walk out your door and see the obvious way that you want to go. And if you do, it's a trap. If you do go down the path that's already laid for you, it's going to take you to all the destinations that are already known. It's going to take you to all of the places that instinct drove the people before you. But if you want to go somewhere unique, if you want to go somewhere that only you would go, if you want to create something new and really live a life that was meant for you because it's literally crafted by you, you have to take the first steps on faith. And as Rumi said, as you start to walk out on the way, the way appears. So as you're looking at the choices that are before you, where you've got a path that's well trodden, you've got a path that literally is invisible and won't become something until you step on it, you have to understand that that's what this life is meant to be and that the only frustration that you will look back on with tremendous regret is knowing that you did what was easy even though it wasn't you. There's some mechanism inside of us. There's something that wants us to walk a path that's never been walked before. And the thing that makes it so hard is right now inside of you is a desperate desire for that to be easy. But it's not going to be easy. It's going to be hard. You're going to fail. You're going to stumble. You're going to fall on your face. And thank God. Because as Muhammad Ali said, only a man who knows what it's like to be defeated can reach down to the bottom of his soul and come up with the extra ounce of power it takes to win when the match is even. So what you have to ask yourself is, what do you want? Do you want it to be easy? Do you want the path to be well-worn? Or do you want the path to be yours? Do you want to know that inside of you is something that you can reach into and grab and that will be there at the moment that you most need it. Do you want to know that you're that type of person? Because if you do, you have to be willing to walk the path that doesn't exist. You have to be willing to tread through the brambles. You have to be willing to fall because it is in that process of failure and pain and agony and suffering that you will become. That's the process that will make you you. That's the process that will shape you. It's the suffering that gives you the reserves to draw on when you need them most. So when you ask for safety, when you ask for ease, know that you're saying a prayer for weakness. And when you take the hard way, know that you're forging yourself. When you make those demands, know that you're building a reserve tank that will be there at the moment when you need it. When you walk the path that only you can walk, know that you're living the life that you were meant to live. And that, my friends, is how you become the you worth becoming.
The wolf on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. It's not easy going it alone, but if you keep going, stay true to yourself. It will be worth it in the end. The hardest walk you can make is the walk you make alone. But that is the walk that makes you the strongest. That is the walk that builds your character the most. To all of you fighting battles alone, to all of you going against the grain, battling the naysayers, stay strong, keep going. Stay strong, keep going. This walk is hard, but the hardest walks lead to the greatest destinations. The toughest climbs always lead to the best views. It will be worth it in the end. And if you show what you are made of, the right people will show up in your life. You won't be a lone wolf forever. You have qualities only few can admire because most don't possess. You have strength only few can understand because most have never experienced. So don't give in. Don't settle. Don't lower your expectations to fit into the world. You were born to stand out. You were born to lead. Lead the pack. They say the wolf on the hill is never as hungry as the wolf climbing the hill. Always be that wolf climbing the hill. Always hungry for more. Always hungry to grow, to feed your mind and rise to the highest level you can take yourself. Never looking back, always looking forward to the next feast, feast of success in whatever you do. It does not matter if you have to walk alone for a while. It is much better to walk alone in the right direction than to follow the herd walking in the wrong direction. Stay strong. Be different. Your destiny is in your hands. Get out there and hunt it. know you know when you are guilty of wasting time and laying in bed and you're being lazy you know it whether that was seven seven o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the morning you know it you have to start the cycle of waking up early by waking up early success is not convenient you have to do what is required to accommodate success holding the line maintaining the standard giving no slack none that's the discipline there are opportunities that are going to come your way and there might be some other things going on and you have to make a choice you have to ask yourself the question what do you want because if you don't know what you want nothing else matters how I'm about to use my time is it positive is it purposeful is it leading in the direction of where I'm going and the meaning of my life? Is it productive and is it profitable? But when you know what you want, E, why do you wake up at three? Because I know what I want. One thing that discipline definitely does help you with is it, it helps you get things done. And when you get things done, when you, you, you actually do things, you, 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 you have more success. I wake up, boom, and I go pursue it.
And if you're going to really be successful in life, if you're going to have it, if you're going to be it, you're going to do it, I need you to take personal responsibility. And I want you to say, the reason I'm not as amazing yet, because I hit the snooze button. That's why I'm not amazing right now. A big part of success is just not being lazy and just doing it. Yeah. Just get, that's like 90% of it is just showing up. The reason why I'm not amazing right now is because I couldn't get up early enough because I told myself I'm not an early person. Get there and start working. Like, you're not going to feel perfect every day. If I felt, if I only worked out when I felt good, I'd be a fat. I'm not, a, I'm not amazing because I would prefer to make excuses than make adjustments. That's why I'm not amazing. Because there's a lot of days I don't want to do it. I mean, it's pretty much the same with everybody that if, that actually gets good at something. I want you to do me a huge favor. I want you to stop talking about this person didn't do that, that person didn't do this, this thing I didn't have that, I didn't grow up here, I didn't get this event, I didn't get, kill it, kill it. You, you get, there's got to be those days you push through. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Why haven't you reached amazing yet? Just keep it 100. I'm not amazing because I'm lazy. Just be what just, just look at yourself in the face and be honest. I'm not amazing because I'd rather spend my money on shoes. I'd rather spend my money on stuff than to make a sacrifice in a book or to fly and go to. I'm not amazing because I'm not doing what I'm supposed to be doing to be amazing. And getting up early is not only an incredible competitive advantage because most of your competitors are asleep. But getting up early is a great gift to give yourself. You get more life. I always tell my, I always say that I'm like the most lazy, disciplined person I know because I don't want to do it. Yeah, but I always do. Do you want to be an artist? Do you want to be an engineer? I don't know, but I want you to start the year off. We're not talking about you know fake dreaming and just writing goals down to be doing it. I'm talking about knowing what you want because when you know what you want. That's where the drive comes from. That's where the passion comes from. When the thing is done, when the discipline has been implemented, remember what that feels like and then remember that those minutes and those hours, they turn into weeks and months and years and holding the line in those critical minutes will put you in an infinitely better place physically and mentally if you maintain the discipline. I, if I don't have my morning routine game, I, I feel you know out of sorts. Um, so I think it's true for everybody. You gotta own your morning, you gotta win it because that starts and sets up everything else. People need that discipline, those routines that will help the rest of the day go better. Get some momentum and be okay if that momentum is really small because it will build, trust it. That momentum builds and trust that those gloomy and bad, dark days, trust that those are going to be there. Honor the difficulty. When we honor the struggle instead of hate the struggle, we can really achieve extraordinary things because our mindset's in the right place. Now the first night you're gonna have a hard time going to sleep. What you do is the next morning you wake up early anyways. That first night you only got five hours worth of sleep and now you're tired throughout the day, good. Because then when you get to bed that night, you will turn off that computer and you'll be able to go to bed earlier like you wanted to. You can live on six hours sleep. So you have 18 hours, you have 18 hours. I want to know what you're doing with your 18 hours. Because you can work your nine to five and that's nine and you can travel for an hour here and there, respect. Nice little solid commute. Oh, you want to be a family man? Mazel tov. You can spend two hours with your kids. What do you do with those other five hours? You're watching House of Cards. You're playing Madden. You're relaxing from the other intense 10. Gary, I already spent 11 hours. Well, great. Then don't complain or want more. Respect that by getting rest and this and that, you were giving up opportunity to go into a new world. You want the audacity to have a 1% life. Let's, let's call it what it is. You want to live as well as the 1% to 2% in the world. It's not very complicated. The math is very raw. Like, you, if you want to have one of the best lives in the world, which is you live on your terms, then you have to pay your dues to get there. And you have to be lucky enough to figure out that you had talent in the thing that you actually want to do. Because you can work 24 hours a day, and if you stink at golf, or you're not a good content producer, or your logos look like that I would make, then you're gonna lose. So that's what you gotta do. The 
most important thing you can do is win the morning. Just win the morning, man. It is not easy. But it is worth it. Thank you.